I'd like to call this meeting of the Town of Rabbit Planning Board to order. I think our agenda stands as posted, but there have been a number of changes about what's going to actually happen tonight. Could I hear a motion to approve the February 25th minutes? Motion. Second. Second. Any amendments or comments? All in favor? Aye. Okay, I have no correspondence or announcements. Does anyone else have any correspondence or announcements? Meeting notes. Oh, yes, could I hear? Thank you. A motion to approve uh, Jim's meeting notes. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. We have a few minutes, but we have two CBA referrals that we can quickly do. The first is Old Primrose, and what they're asking for is for a 300 square foot variance to create an accessory dwelling in an existing barn on Old Primrose Hill Road. It's a uh, they want to go 1,200 square feet, and uh, 900 square feet is all that's allowed in the district. What I can do is read the, uh, read the uh, resolution and see what you think. The Town of Rhyme Planning Board, upon referral by the ZBA of an application by Darren Davidovich on behalf of Old Primrose LLC for a 300 square foot area variance for an accessory dwelling in an existing barn at 6 Old Primrose Hill Road in the RC5 district. Uh, one, the planning board finds that the requested variance raises no significant planning or environmental concerns. Two, recommends the ZBA rely upon its own study of the facts and deciding the application in accordance with the criteria and procedures set for Town Code Chapter 125, including consideration of the input of neighboring property owners. Could I hear a motion to approve? Second. Second. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor? All right. Very good. We have one other. Uh, this is Roger Smith, Tannery Place. And the uh, resolution states that the Town of Rhymic Planning Board, upon referral by the ZBA of an application by Roger Smith for 536 square foot area variance to use an existing accessory dwelling over a stable, a 3,173 square foot area variance for conversion of an existing barn to an accessory dwelling, and a 5,570 square foot variance for aggregate accessory structure square footage of 437 route 308 in the RC5 zoning district. The buildings exist which is why the uh, 5,570 square foot area variance is because it's over the limit, but the buildings themselves exist. The um, dwelling over the stable, the, I'm sorry, exists. The other one, the 3,100 square foot, is for a conversion of existing barn that exists on the property into an accessory dwelling. To my knowledge, there's no, there's no expansion of footprint or anything like that. And what it goes on to say here, if we're all in agreement, is we find that the requested barry variance raises no significant planning environmental concerns in particular since while the variances appear significant the proposed work is being done entirely within existing structures on the property we recommend that the zba rely upon its own study of the facts of deciding the application in accordance with the criteria and procedures set forth in town code chapter 125.68e4 and 125.27a4 could i hear a motion to approve Thomas. second second any discussion <coughs> hearing none all in favor all right. Very good, thank you. I have a slow dish. Yeah, I tell you, this is not right. I will now do my version of it. Yes, good idea. Uh, we all did the uh, site visit to the Rhinebeck Village site, the uh, proposed hotel up on 9G, and we met with um, Mark Kaminsky today, the representative and engineer for the project, and um, went over potential changes. Uh, they realized there would not be an event center there. They discussed building within the existing uh, buffer zones, the 200 square foot, 200 square, the 200 foot buffer off of 9G, and the 100 foot buffer off of middle room as required by law. And since there's not going to be any uh, event center, in the north part they were going to put some of the units in the north section of the property, some in the south section, but in order to allow them a few more rooms than would ordinarily be elected in a single property, they're still proposing to subdivide the property into two properties. And both properties will then be running off a common water system and common sewage disposal system. They'll have to set up a transportation corporation to do that. Uh, we discussed a number of the concerns we had about configuration, placement, siting, uh, architecture, and they recognized they have a great deal of work to do in order to come up with something that I think uh, will answer the concerns that we have expressed 
at the, at, after the site visit with our, with our last hearing on this particular project. So it will be coming back when we, su we suspect it will be significantly altered from what we have seen already. I think they, uh, they know that uh, what was being proposed is simply not acceptable. So that will be coming back to us, but it's going to be virtually a brand new application. It will be that different. We also had a very nice discussion with uh, the Grassby representatives. We had uh, Jonathan Mensch, and we basically reviewed their proposal that they gave us uh, for the project, uh, which we were going to send down to Charles Birnbaum to look over from a cultural landscape standpoint. We proposed a number of changes, as we found those of us uh, uh, Kathy and Melody and I found that there were a great many efficiencies in what they had. They had a lot of general overviews, general proposals, but no details how to do it, where to do it, what they were really going to do. So we tried to work with them. They're going to propose, they're going to provide us with another proposal to send to Charles, which we hope will be such that he can then actually review what they're proposing to do and come back with some really good comments and get that working out with us. Uh, as you know, they're no longer doing a phase project. They want to build up the whole thing at once. So they also will be going back to DEC and the health department. Uh, they're also dealing with New York State DOT uh, since the project has changed in terms of its uh, the way they want to build it out. It's no longer going to be phased. We're no, no longer be approving phase one, phase two, whatever. The whole thing will be approved at once. So that will be coming out. And of course, the secret. We'll be working on that once we get the necessary information from them. And as luck would have it, we can have our first public hearing, which is Mansour for South Hinderlands Drive, Site Plan Special Use Permit and Wetlands Permit. Thank you. 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 Thank who was our wetlands expert, who determined that she did not find anything that would cause the stream to be um, related to as wetlands. Uh, she didn't have any findings that would suggest that we're working with a wetland zone. Uh, we did offer a new drawing to set back from the stream, which is C101B, which we put the pool parallel to the house instead of being perpendicular to try to appease the board. Okay, I know we have a number of questions. You're going to be excavating for the pool. That's correct. And our understanding is that you're also raising the uh, ground level, the site for the pool, correct? And correct, in certain areas of the background, yes. And to what extent is that being raised? How high? How from Six to 12 inches. Six to 12 inches. And where is the soil coming from? The soil is what's excavated from the ground. From, from the pool. Right. Okay. Now, one of the questions we had is stabilizing. You know, you're raising it up, stabilizing it since it's quite close to the stream. Mm -hmm. And what steps are going to be taken as you raise it up to ensure that it actually is stabilized? Usually when soil is being raised like that, it's done in levels and then it's, then it's firmed up for the next one is going to make sure it just doesn't run off in the next rainstorm. Correct. It would be the material that we're using as the fill material would be tamped in lifts, four to six inch lifts mm -hmm. as needed. Okay. And then the topsoil, when topsoil does go on to bring back the new grass, it would be rolled. Okay. There's another, I know that the signal is still being over reporting on your report for suggestions. One of the concerns we do have, and um, I do believe that the Army Corps has designated that stream area as a wetland. We've done that for most of the streams. They're in the town of Rhinebeck. They now consider them to be wetlands. They consider the Hudson River to be a wetland in its environments. Okay. So it still is, falls under the town of Rhinebeck wetland law. Okay. I um, still, we were concerned because of how close it is to the street that's being done and how it is being raised up about the road, about the situation of anything going down into the stream or just washing out. And I, um, do you have a planting plan of appropriate plants, you know, for a riparian area that could be used to stabilize that other than just lawn grasses? Yes, and I believe we supplied that with our submission. Okay. So it should be C10.02. C1 okay, I think we have that here. And these are the, these are the plants right here? Yes, these are the plants that we'd be looking to use to mitigate. Okay. 
Okay. And we're also depicted on C101A and C101B. Those are the ones that are right there. Yes, those are the ones. Okay, very good. But those are only along a very short section of the stream, isn't that correct, according to the site plan? No, I mean, we're showing plantings, a row right here, another one to back it up, and then one row along the bed. I'm just trying to get a handle on it. I see 275 as one of the, I'm going to turn to gray there. Mm -hmm. And what is, what's the level of the screen? Is there a the level of the I mean, some of the screen's not really facing, but is that the level for the screen when you're going up one foot? The 276 for the pool. That I'm not sure of. <clears throat> and you see the 275 does curve around there to the right, which suggests that that is the stream height, it's 275, and you're going maybe one foot up from the stream. Correct. And you look to the right? Okay. 280 is over there. So it does, and it slopes down that way. The 275 goes around there. Okay. Okay, other questions for the applicant? Um, have you considered some plantings all along the stream on your property to help protect the stream from uh, lawn fertilizer, et cetera? flowing into the stream? Uh, not particularly, no. We've only placed the plants in the areas where we are going to be disturbing. Uh -huh. the, I remember looking at a couple of photos of the stream. I think it's quite barren, is it not, all along the stream? On yes. The, um, piece of property? With some river rock type cobblestones right. in there. What do you think about the idea of doing some planting, what's called riparian vegetation, along the stream to help protect it? I mean, we're, we're open to suggestions. Um, are you familiar with the uh, Farm and Home Center on 44, the uh -huh. Dutchess County Farm and Home Center? On Route 44 on the way to Millbrook. Okay. Um, they are able to provide a service whereby, for no charge, you can go in there with your site plan and they will help you plan plantings, the kind of plantings that are best done along a stream. Um, the other rather lovely thing is they're, they're having a sale right now of seedlings, the kinds of things that you know would best be planted along your stream. Mm -hmm like, you know, 10 appropriate shrubs for $20, that kind of pricing. Okay. Is this something that you would be willing to do, to sit down with them and put together a plan? Absolutely. I have some information um, that you can take with you if you'd like. It, it has the names of the people there, phone number. It even has their seedling uh, sale. Okay, check them on that. You may have it. Thank you very much. What they often suggest is uh, what people do with a stream like yours is um, they often plant a higher, a thicker uh, border across the stream that eventually serves a wonderful screening <coughs> effect, and then a lower border on the, the pool side. Okay, interesting. But anyway, I think uh, it will be very helpful if you sit down with them. I definitely will. Great. We're just trying to get a little more information just to see whether or not we can consider the weapon and the parcel access, the county parcel access. Okay. Are there other comments from 
members, presence members of the board at the moment. Would the CAB like to comment? Uh, uh, well, that's one Mark has not supplied me with any report on. Okay, I know that he <coughs> sent. Wasn't that one? Was this the one that, that was he gave me address. one for 139 Montgomery Street okay. and for um, 2875 Plantings, Kendi is recommended by Trees for Trips, which I believe is currently accepting applications for distribution of plants for this purpose. I do recall we discussed changing the orientation of the pool, which has been accomplished, so that it was not as near the stream. I will try to find a copy of this report to forward when I believe Gretchen has it. So that she replied, certainly. two options to the board, whichever you find more feasible and are willing to accept. But my client's open to both options. I think he actually prefers the parallel to the house, opposed to the perpendicular. I don't think the other one was an option. I think we preferred the parallel to the house. That's where I thought we ended up. It's not as close to the street. For some reason? Parcel access that shows the, the boundaries. It was working this oh, afternoon. Oh, 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 yeah. There it is. Apparently, it's very slow today. <laughs> and then, if you click on the wetland uh, map, you will see the interconnection of even seasonal streams. You know, they flow into a wetland, which flows into a stream, which finds its way to the Langhorne Hill, which ends up in the Hudson. No, I mean, my main comments just related to, you know, the, as we have since the beginning, the location of the pool, um, the fact that it's in the buffer. We talked about, you know, locating things in the buffer before. But obviously, this buffer comes pretty far out from the street. So it's really just a discussion of locating the pool without the buffer and being comfortable with it. You know, the elevation of it above the, the stream. I think that's right now. Okay, it appears the elevation above the stream would be roughly one foot. That they provided that would help. Well, that might be helpful. Since the, uh, the stream technology is failing today. So that's the stream. And 
there's going to be will be generally between the tree and the and the desk steps. Yep. Okay. Well, I have a resolution on me. Let's see how y'all feel. The town of Randolph County Board hereby access files and the application of land sewer region pools for the site plan approval special permit and the recommend permit under town code chapter 125, section 12517, 12565, and chapter 120, section 124, at four hinterlands drive in the Marcy 5 uh, rural countryside zoning district. Here from some post actions type 2 under secret, which for the environmental quality review is completed. Based upon review of submitted information, including the question of planning board members and COG members on their subject of the project properly, finds the proposed work is consistent with the objective stated in Chapter 125 and Chapter 120. With respect to the application for wetlands permits to authorize work, finds the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with the requirements for wetland permits set forth in the Town Code, Chapter 120. Grants the requested wetlands permit, conditional permit, receive a special use permit, and site plan approved by the planning board. With respect to the application of social use permits, authorized work, funds that both work and intended use to be consistent with general standards for social use permits set forth in Town Code Chapter 125, and grants the special grants requested special use permit, conditional upon receipt of site plan approval by the planning board. With respect to the application for site plan approval, funds the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with Town Code Chapter 125-75, and approves the application inclusive of the application materials and plan sheet by record engineering dated June 12, 2019, with the most recent revision date of September 6, 2019. And I think we want to uh, take note that it is the uh, proposal which has the pool parallel to the house and not perpendicular. That's correct. C101B. Uh, okay, very good, thank you. All right, authorizes the planning board to stamp and sign the above cited site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of the low conditions and requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of this resolution. Submission of the above cited site plan in the form and numbers specified in the town chapter Code Chapter 125, Section 12578B, except as may be modified to a lesser number by the chair with consideration of filing and distribution requirements. Payment of any outstanding fees and reimbursable amounts due to the town of Rhinebeck related to review and processing of applications subject to this resolution. And receipt of all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required herein or from any other town, county, state, or other agency as required to undertake the proposed actions. Could I hear a motion to approve? A motion to, uh, well, I'd like to discuss something before we approve it. I'm not quite sure what the procedure is. We have a motion, we'll a a motion in a second, then we have okay, discussion. Okay, great. We didn't close the public hearing. Oh, oh, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So we'll second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Could I have a motion on the approval resolution? So moved. Second. 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 Discussion. Discussion. Great. Um, how about if we add to this resolution that the applicant will develop a plan for riparian vegetation along the length of the stream um, that you would have final approval as we've done with in the past and seal will be granted when everything is executed. Could I have a motion to amend the resolution to include Edna's uh, proposed, proposed amendment? Then, then I'll ask a question that you want yeah. me to ask a So moved. Second. Second. Question. Um, when you were talking about it, you referenced um, the folks at Cornell, the yes. Farm and Home Center. Mm -hmm. Is that through Cornell or is that through uh, Soil and Water? Soil and Water. So, it's through, so you might want to be, and maybe you want to reference the Soil and Water. That they would They would be a resource for helping develop yes. the plan. And I would be a little more comfortable rather than rather than um, requiring it to be the entire length mm -hmm. to be based on the plan recommended by Soil and Water. Okay. So if Soil and Water decides it doesn't need to cover the whole length, but it really needs to cover this area, it gives you a little more flexibility and a little more latitude. But just reference it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we all agree to add that and then Is that acceptable to the amendment? everybody know. Yeah, I, I just, I, and I, I think this is ignorance of me, I'm not an engineer. But right now there are no plants along the stream. So is it placing the pool that's going to disturb the environment and therefore these plants are required? I mean, right, right now I could be using fertilizers and it's going into the stream, there are no plants. So what's the difference? What you're doing is you're raising the level 
talk about putting the pool in, you're raising the level of the pool is above where it is right now with the ground. So you're creating okay. more of an incline down towards the stream, which obviously creates a greater opportunity for erosion into the for stream. Or things to leach into the Yeah, place. and anyone okay. downstream okay. might be impacted by that. But if soil and water, when you're talking to them, they say it's enough, it's sufficient to do it just this length and like that, I'd be comfortable with their determination. Okay, so we will we will no longer be basing the mitigation plan off of my engineer plans, but we'll base it off of yes. Dutch County kind of soil and water. Yes. Okay. Can, can you come up to the sure. microphone? Yeah, I know. I'm the, the neighbor to the west to South Hinterland. So I just wanted to clarify in my head, because they're not close to the stream, there isn't going to be any impact to the water drainage going from that his house on to our to our property. That's the intent of what we're trying to do in the repairing and planting to make sure that the site is secure so there won't be any erosion, anything of that sort going down. There shouldn't be any more water going down than you would have okay. now. But because just to make sure that it won't erode out. Okay. That that's the intent. Alright, yeah. What happens if there is then we may have to revisit that. I'm just nervous because, yes, it is seasonal. Yeah. It is absolutely seasonal. But there's a lot of water. When yes, there is a lot of water, and I have to concur with you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I, I want to make sure that this project is done perfectly well because I'm, I'm putting a lot of money. So it's either done right. I, I don't want to take the risk of any excess water that could create problems. So I'm referring to you because you guys are, I mean, this is what you do, you're engineers. So tell me, what exactly is needed? And I want to know how much does that also add to my bird? Basically, what's going to add to it is the actual planting, the plants and the planting, because you're going to have to do everything else already. You know, the, the excavation, the raising the level, you have to do that to put the pool in anyway. So yeah. then the addition to that is going to be the planting to ensure that the whole bank going down towards the stream from the pool area is secured. So and that, that's enough during the times that the, the stream it will be flush. It should be. It's not gonna it's not gonna affect the, the, the soap or the pool. It should be but the one thing it's not be, it should but the one thing that or affect the foundation be. or affect well, the if you have right, any yeah. other storm like Irene or something like that uh -huh. because your house and your property on the stream are only within about a foot or so of each other you're if you could very well be flooded, just as many places were flooded that weren't flooded before, in extreme situations. In extreme situations. But it would be extreme situations, and this obviously isn't going to address that, because the amount of water would be far more than the stream could possibly handle. Uh, there's really nothing you can do about that. But the two recommendations that were made, trees for trips and your recommendation through soil and water, would provide you with access to some reasonably priced plant material in answer to your question. So there's options for getting it that isn't, you know, going to the highest, most expensive nursery. The key here is to try to prevent any erosion down from the pool site into the stream. Because if it starts to cloud the stream, then of course it does raise the water level in the stream when there are, you know, high water situations. Which then of course isn't good for you because then it's going to come back up the hill towards your pool. So you're not going to want that either. That's understood. I'm Mark Pritchard, and I live with Jenny uh, in the same property just uh, west of, uh, of theirs. My concern also is with the, uh, the runoff where we have intense rains. And uh, it seems to me that's the point at which uh, the erosion uh, might take place after this uh, uh, pool has been put in place. When it, even now, when we have excessive rains, uh, we'll have flooding on our eastern property between ourselves and, and our neighbors. And you know, uh, um, we're at the bottom of a pretty steep hill. So when the water comes down, it rushes like crazy. And as I say, that's our primary concern. If, if you, the photo that he had showing the stream shows that uh, it's uh, it's not been altered much by the rains. What happens is the rains just come up and go over it and then come yeah. down. So if they're putting in a pool and they're raising the soil level uh, until that becomes stabilized with the roots of the plants that they're suggesting putting in, um, there's the opportunity for erosion and it will all end up on our 
for silt fencing during the construction until the ground is stabilized will be required. And that's a requirement because you're, you're supposed to prevent that sort of erosion taking place in your water bodies during construction. And until the thing is stabilized, the silt fences will have to be maintained and you know properly maintained. So I have to clean the silt out. You have to make sure that they're still there after having that. We appreciate your uh, your work on this and the study. Also, we're supportive of our neighbors having a pool for the kids and so Thank you. Okay, we've amended the amendment and added the amendment, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have a motion. Any more discussion by members of the board? Okay, we'll pull the board. Edna. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. Kathy. Woody. Aye. And, uh, and, and the new board, the seventh member of the planning board, is, is not here tonight. She's uh, off having a good time somewhere, I think, so she wasn't going to join us. So you're all set. Once you get the planning plan given together, the next step, of course, is get it to us you know, on the proper plan for you to stamp and sign. And after that's done, you're in a position to get the building to go ahead and construct. All right. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Have a great evening. Okay. The next one is Henry Stout and uh, 139 Montgomery Street site plan for a single family dwelling on Town and Village property. Um, I requested that we continue the public hearing until April 6th. We have received a letter from our engineer uh, raising a number of issues with this property that need to be corrected by his engineer before we can go forward with that. So at this point, uh, and we have the, the letter is on file, anyone wants to read it, uh, and there's one other thing which is not in the letter, which our engineer mentioned to me today. There is a easement along the front of the property with both the town and the village of Rhinebeck for drainage, which has to be maintained, and that may have some impact also on some of the things he wants to do there. So his engineer is gonna have to answer that. So, are there any questions? Uh, and there's another issue too, which I think we also have to discuss with our building inspector, is their floodplain on this property comes rather close to where he's building. And he wanted to put in a full basement, which would place the basement many feet below the flood level, uh, which uh, from the, I've been told by our building inspector you're not supposed to do. You can't do, you may need a special floodplain permit to do that. So we have to investigate this more fully as well. So we have a number of things still to do on this application. So we're going to continue with April 6th at 6.45. Could I have a motion to do so? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Very good, thank you. Next public hearing is Tom Fisher, <coughs> minor subdivision lot line adjustment at 595 Mill Road. Coordinated environmental quality review is concluded. 
Based upon review of submitted information to the enforcement planning board members and the CAD of AAC members on their site visit to the property, finds the vote is consistent with the objective stated in Chapter 101 subdivision of land. With respect to the minor subdivision, finds that the vote action is consistent with Town Code Chapter 101, Section 101, 4.4, and approves the application inclusive of minor subdivision plan sheet prepared by Decker Survey dated January 23, 2020. Authorize the planning board chair to stamp and sign the above cited site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of the local conditions and or requirements within 180 calendar days of the adoption of the resolution. Stamping of the subdivision final plan is non jurisdictional subdivision for the filing purposes only by the Dutchess County Department of Health. Submission of the above cited survey map in the form and number specified within town code chapter 101, except as may be modified to a lesser number by the chair in consideration of filing and distribution requirements. Submission of the deeds to be filed with the Dutchess County. Clerk's office and payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due to the town of Brandbeck related review and processing of applications subject to this resolution. Third item a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? I will pull the board. Kathy? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? And I vote aye. Okay. Our next public hearing is Keith Ingmar and Christina Alba. This is another one that we will be uh, continuing. There are a couple of violations on the property uh, filed by the zoning enforcement officer, which precludes us from proceeding at this time with this application. So, if I could have a motion to continue the public meeting until April 20th at 6.40 p.m. Oh, yes. Second? Second. All in favor? Very good. We have one more, Catherine Whitman, 16 year old oh, you do. site plan and renovation. Some more landscaping along there. I mean, I can tell you that the neighbors 
um, can be nothing but happy about the improvement of the property. So the, the landscaping is simply some icing on the cake, I guess, to give a little buffer there. Um, it's, a, it's a much deeper and a much more usable backyard than you would imagine from the road. So I think the landscaping will enhance that and make it more user friendly. We asked to have the driveway better defined um, because right now it just sort of finds its own way in into the garage. So she's updated that on the plan. Um, the other thing we talked about, and I don't know whether you were going to talk about changing it or not, was you had the concept of maybe the wood interior would be wrapped around. Did you? Um, can you go to that? Yeah. Anything here that's white would be a cedar. So the, the cedar material that's used that light brown on the interior uh, as the, it's sort of an enclosed entrance, they're going to use that material to wrap around the, the original ranch house, not right. the addition. So, so they will be more integrated. We thought, it, we thought it, it sort of anchored a little more to the, to the ground. The other thing that came up, and I think we, we wanted to be clear about this, there seemed to be I don't know, maybe when we were asking about something in a prior presentation, it looked like the zoning board might have misconstrued what we were saying about it being on a scenic road. And I, I went back and drove the neighborhood, and yes, it's a scenic road, but I don't think that there's any sort of, the housing stock along that road is not all of one piece. It doesn't look like they all fit together, and so, the fact that this is contemporary and different, I don't think has any, is detrimental at all on the, on the scenic road. So I just wanted to make clear. Yeah, I, I provided an email to Chris that I think clarified that, and she said she thought that took care of the question. Okay, is, but because yeah. it was mentioned in their meeting notes, right. I thought It is, however, a highly trafficked road, scenic or not, and I think that that, in a way, characterizes in some way how those properties along with or are not due because people tend to drive up and down. Yeah, so I don't think at all this design detracts from from that scenic road. And as a matter of fact, that the improvements that are being made to the entire property are only going to, in my opinion, enhance that section of the scenic road. Right? But I think the change to the cedar is a nice a nice aesthetic element that um, certainly enhances it. I, uh, we thought it was a pretty straightforward project that um, will only benefit the neighborhood. Any other comments or questions from the board? Go <coughs> back here. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. The town of Brown and Clanny Board has access follows an application by Kathleen Whitman for site plan approval under Town Code Chapter 125 for renovation and an addition to an existing residence existing Old Post Road within the RA 10 zoning district. The reference to post action is type 2 under secret for coordinated environmental quality reviews completed. Based upon review of submitted information, including both the planning board members and the CABWAC members on your site visit the project property, conditioned upon receiving ZBA approval for the variance request, finds that the post work is consistent with the objective stated in Chapter 125. With respect to the application for site plan approval, finds that the post work and intended use to be consistent with Chapter 125, Section 12572, and approves the application, includes it in of the application of materials and plan sheets by Kathy Whitman Architecture dated January 13, 2020. Authorizes the planning board chair to stamp and sign the bill cited site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of the below conditions and the requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of this resolution. Submission of the above cited site plan in the form and number specified in Town Code Chapter 125, except as being modified to a lesser extent by the chair in favor of filing distribution requirements. Uh, receipt of the uh, zoning variance approval. Uh, and we'll work that one out. Payment of any outstanding fees and a reimbursable amounts due to the town of Ryan that related to review and processing of the applicant subject to this resolution. Receipt of all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required herein or from any other town, county, state, or agency as required <coughs> to undertake proposed actions. Could I have a motion to approve? Second. 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 Any discussion? Hearing none. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Aye. And I vote that. Thank you. You're very welcome. I have a quick question. Yes. Melody, you said something along the lines of the neighbors can only be happy 
that we're doing this? Is that something you've heard or just? just no, that is just my observation. Yeah. That I've never met them, so I was hoping. That's what <laughs> I well, I couldn't fit, but no. I mean, having walked the property and, and seen what they're looking at from their back door. Yeah. Um, uh, Catherine said she's spoken to them. And, um, we're married, so I didn't know that. So. <laughs> we'll, work, we'll work toward improving that. Uh, but no, I mean, okay. really, as you know, it stands, the backyard is, I mean, you know, you, they're looking at just like a. No. Sure. I wasn't. Because no. okay. it's not yumpy. It's not, it's not that it, it's just, you know, anything right. that's in. If they'll be looking at the back of a nice house. They'll be looking at an upgraded garage. They'll be looking at mowed lawn and whatever else you do. Yeah. So um, it's actually, I think, it has the potential to be a really lovely backyard. You know, there's quite a bit of property back there, and you know, I'm sure. And you get to the back of it, you're looking at the fields. So you know, there's a lot of a lot of real possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Have fun with it. Thanks. Anything else from the board? Can I hear a motion to adjourn? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. We stand adjourned. Ooh.